Brothers and sisters, gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is what will bring about increase in the goodness that you have. Gratitude to Allah Almighty is what will bring about increase to the goodness that you have. I want increase in what Allah has bestowed upon me in terms of favor. Be it that which is connected to this beautiful worldly life or connected to the even more beautiful hereafter. My beloved brothers and sisters, Allah has created us as human beings. He chose to make us from this species and the choice was his alone. You are not on earth by a choice of yourself. You are not on earth by a choice of yourself, nor are you in a place where you had chosen to be born in terms of your place of birth. It was Allah who chose and everything Allah chooses. Remember, it's part of your test. So Allah Almighty puts you in a situation and a condition whereby certain things you have no say in, but many other things Allah gives you the ability, the capacity, the brain, the understanding to a degree. And Allah wants you to use all of that to worship him and him alone. For this reason, Allah says in the Quran, I have not created mankind or jinn kind except for them to worship me. One might ask, what does that mean? Because the young children think that worship means to be engaged in perpetual prayer or to be involved in perpetual Quranic recitation or to be fasting every single day. That is what worship is. But as you learn more and more, you realize that just by you living your life in a halal, beautiful way, fulfilling the instruction of Allah, staying away from the prohibitions, your life becomes an act of worship. Every aspect of your living becomes an act of worship. When you connect it to Allah, the minute you disconnect from Allah, you lose the path. And this is why if you take a look at the most repeated dua on earth, it is the most important dua. What is the meaning of dua? Dua is supplication. Some people say prayer. Prayer in actual fact, yes, it does translate as dua. But when we say salah, some people say, well, that is prayer. Truth is the English language doesn't qualify to give you the proper meanings of all these terminologies that are used in order to refer to what Allah has ordained or even for that matter, that which is in the Arabic language. So when you say prayer in English, it depends what you're talking about. It is more supplication and dua than salah. Although salah is a certain type of calling out to Allah in a way that starts with Allahu Akbar when you are starting the prayer and ends with a salam. So Allah wants you to ask him. Allah wants you to supplicate. Allah wants you to pray to him. And the most repeated dua on earth is a dua for guidance. Who knows what that dua is? Anyone? The one that is repeated the most on earth, the billions and the trillions and the quadrillions and the pentillions and the septillions and the nonillions. You can see I'm a Zimbabwean. I know all these figures, right? Mashallah. You guys are doing much better than we are at this moment. That's why you're probably weak with your numbers. If Allah wants to bless you, perhaps he might allow you to learn some of these figures. But inshallah, that blessing is not as important as the blessing of being sustained by Allah and guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So all of those people who have come from the beginning to now, there was a supplication taught to them and it has to be repeated. That supplication and dua, you all have to repeat it. And so do I, if I'm a believer and my five daily prayers will not be accepted. If I don't repeat that, what is it? Oh, guide us to the straight path. The most important dua that you will ever read and say in forms of supplication is guide us to the straight path. It is compulsory to repeat that in every unit of your prayer. At times behind the Imam, the Imam does it for you. But 
Mostly we would be doing it ourselves because how many units of prayer do you fulfill every day? So many. 17 minimum. And beyond that, there is Sunnah and Nafil, which goes on to many units or Raka'at. So Allah wants you to repeat that because the most important gift that Allah can ever give you is that He guides you to the straight path. Not the path of those who have earned His anger, nor the path of those, nor the path of those who have gone astray. Allah says, every one of you have to say, guide us to the straight path. So by me calling out to Allah and supplicating to him, it increases the chances of myself being rightly guided. The same applies anything I want on earth. Don't think that your capacity and your capability will singularly get you to achieve what you want. No, it won't. It is the help of Allah that will give you what you want. It's not just your capacity. There are people far more intelligent than you and I. They didn't even find the straight path. There are people who have top brains, but they are struggling on earth. Why? Because it shows you the top brain is not necessarily the richest person. Many times you find some of the wealthiest. They don't really have a school certificate because Allah wants to prove to you and I that your sustenance is not necessarily connected to your brain capacity. No, it's Allah. If Allah wants you to earn, he will put you in the right place at the right time with the right idea and interact with the right people and so on. And suddenly you will earn. What happened? Was that not Allah? It was Allah. He bestowed upon you his favor. He made you do things that gave you. But sustenance is not everything. Your wealth is not everything. Many people have wealth but they don't have a connection with the owner of the wealth, the true owner of the wealth. And who is that? If you say, well, it's me, then you are wrong. When you came onto this earth, you came with nothing. When you leave, you shall leave with nothing. While you were on earth, you struggled to achieve something and you strove and you worked hard and you toiled and you amassed and you collected. And all of that which you collected, not a single penny are you going to take back with you. But guess what? Allah is going to question you about every single thing that you left behind. I left it behind. What was the purpose? I left it behind. Well, one might say, well, are you trying to tell us that we shouldn't earn? No, not at all. But what I am telling you is when you earn and you achieve, connect yourself with Allah. Relate with your maker. Who are you? When you came onto the earth, you came with nothing. Allah bestowed you with things. Right now we are seated here. All of us are clothed. We have some clothing. That means Allah gave you. You can never be below zero. When you came, you were on zero. Do you not have clothes right now? Do you not have something right now? Allah has already given you more than you can imagine. Your heartbeat that is perhaps pumping without even you noticing. How many times does the heart beat in a day? On average, 136,000 times. Ask those who are heart patients. May Allah give them cure. Ask them if you skip a beat or something goes wrong with your heart or has gone wrong, you would go to the other corner of the world in order to make sure that you are dealt with so that your heart continues to pump in a proper way. You put in a pacemaker, you do your stents, you have the bypasses and so on. May Allah grant us good health. But when you were healthy, you didn't notice that your heart was pumping. Right? When you were healthy, you didn't notice a thing. Your heart was pumping. Today I'm looking at you. Mashallah, I see you. You can see me. What did you pay? What did you pay for your eyes to be able to see in full color, high definition, top, without any need of fine tuning your eyes. What did you pay? Nothing, nothing, zero. You can hear me, can't you? What did you pay to have the ability to hear? What did you pay to have the ability to breathe? What did you pay to have the ability to smell? What did you pay to have the ability to walk and to talk? What did you pay to have a brain and an understanding? Allah says, all I want you to do is worship me and me alone and stay away from that which is harmful to you. And because I created you, I'm the one who knows 
what is harmful for you and what is not harmful. So when Allah has made something haram, you need to know it means it is harmful, whether you've understood the harm or not. It's not up to me to say, you know what? I don't understand why this is haram. So therefore I will do it. Astaghfirullah. That's wrong. You can't say that. I don't understand why this is haram, but I know that Allah made it haram. So I consider it haram. That is a believer. That is a believer. And if you are weak and you have fallen and you have faulted, Allah tells you, you know what? We want you to come back to us as soon as you can come back to us, turn to us, repent. The verses I read before you, the last verses of Surah Al Furqan, Allah Almighty is describing the true worshippers of the most merciful. If he wanted, he could have said the true worshippers of the most severe, the true worshippers of the one who would punish because Allah Almighty is just. But Allah chooses to bless us, to give us good news and glad tidings. He says, Ibadur Rahmani, the worshippers of the most merciful, the worshippers of the most merciful Ibadur Rahman. Who are they? They are the ones whom when they walk on earth, they tread with humility. They are humble people. They don't consider themselves a big deal because nobody is a big deal. That's the reason. If Allah has blessed you, thank Allah, be humble. Talk to the people, treat them well. You are one of an entire species on earth. The true worshippers of Allah are those whom when they walk, they, are, they walk with humility, humbleness. And when someone speaks to them in a negative way, either abuse them or swear them or mock at them or deceive them, Allah says, وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا They prefer peace than to create a problem. Someone as you are walking on the street and they call you with a silly name, don't even look towards them. You say salam and you keep walking. Those are the worshippers of Allah. Allah describes them in the Quran. So Allah Almighty guides and Allah Almighty wants us to ask Him and to keep asking Him. And he wants us to supplicate to him and to call out to him in a hadith known as Hadith Qudsi. And for your information, Hadith Qudsi is where the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is telling us that Allah Almighty has said the following. So it's not a Quranic verse, but it's the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, narrating to us what Allah has said to him to relay to us. Ya ibadi, Allah says, Oh my worshippers, Kullukum dalun, illa man hadaituhu, fastahduni ahdikum. Oh my worshippers, all of you are astray, except those whom I have guided. So seek guidance from me and I will guide you. Allah tells you, Oh man, don't think that you are upon guidance because of yourself alone. It is my favor upon you that you are guided. If you get up for prayer, don't think it was only you. Yes, Allah gave you the acceptance and made you understand and gave you the capacity and gave you the urge to want to get up for Fajr. So thank him for that. Thank him for that. I started off by saying gratitude will bring about increase. You thank Allah. Oh Allah, I thank you. You gave me the urge to get up for Fajr. You made me open my eye. You gave me a heart that wanted to get off my bed. So I got off because you made sure that I felt that I needed to get off the bed. You gave me the energy. When I got off, I made wudu. I was in time. I went, I did Salatul Fajr and I came back. Oh Allah, I thank you for that. If that happens, what will be the outcome. Allah says we will give you increase in a short time. We will give you the acceptance to get up for another prayer. What is it? Tahajjud. Why did you get up for Tahajjud? Tahajjud is the early morning prayer before Fajr because you loved Allah and you thanked him for getting you up for Fajr. He says because of your gratitude, I will invite you to another prayer and I will give you the strength to get up for it. It is a prayer where the closest you can be to me is at that particular time. And more than that, when you go into sujood or prostration, you will be the closest to your Lord. You can cry to him. You can praise him and you will find the comfort of your soul and heart. That is Allah. So Allah says together with your ability, pray, understand where it's coming from, whether it's guidance or sustenance or anything you want or your marriage 
or your goodness on earth, your houses, your cars, whatever it may be. It's not just you and your brain. Call out to Allah, oh Allah, grant me goodness and give me blessing in it. Because there is no point in amassing wealth without goodness and barakah and blessings. That wealth will be a means of your downfall. Look at Qarun at the time of the Prophet Musa or Moses, may peace be upon him, alayhi salam. He was given a lot of wealth, more than you and I. Allah says, we gave him so much wealth that the keys to the treasures of his wealth alone had to be carried by a group of strong men. And it was difficult for them to carry just the keys. Imagine how much he had. What was his crime? Why did Allah destroy him? His crime was the more he got, the more arrogant he became. The more he got, the more he despised the people around him. The more he got, the more he unplugged from Allah. The more he got, the more he felt it's me, my brain, my capacity. And I am the one who was sharp enough to become so wealthy. Allah says, because you connected it to you, we want to show you, we're going to take it away just like that in a flash. Now, as you know, when you see someone with a nice car, we are human. It happens to me too. I look at it and say, MashaAllah, so beautiful, man. I wish I had one of those. Agreed? Agreed? You see a beautiful motor vehicle. Come on, you young guys. You can't tell me you don't look and say, MashaAllah, one day I will get a car like this, right? Or you say to yourself, one day, Inshallah, I wish I can get one of these. So you see someone's house, well built, beautiful. Inshallah, when I build my house, I'm going to build it like this. Is it wrong to say that? It's not wrong to say that. It's okay. No problem. Say, MashaAllah, Alhamdulillah, Oh Allah, bless me. But connect it to Allah. Ask Allah, Oh Allah, grant me and grant me goodness. And you know what? When you're asking Allah and he starts to give you, become humble and thank him. Oh Allah, when I said one day I will get a car like this, I didn't even know what was going to happen. Today I can afford 10 of those cars. I thank you for it, Oh Allah. One I will use. And a big portion of my money, I'm going to look at those who don't have things and give to them so that you can be pleased with me. Because when I die, my heirs, although they would be getting from what I leave, but you have written for them their own sustenance. You have written for them their own sustenance. May Allah grant us ease. However, my brothers and sisters, it's wrong for us to forget the main focus. What is the main focus? If I ask you today, are you a believer? You're going to say yes. Do you worship Allah alone? You're going to say yes. And then if I say, what is your main focus? What are you going to say? There's only one word, one answer. Can you say it loudly? Come on. I want to hear it. What is your main focus? People of Chipata, mashallah. We know what it is. Your main focus is paradise and Jannah. Do you not agree? What do you want if Allah gave you in this world, but you don't get paradise, you lost. And if Allah did not give you in this world, but he gave you paradise, you won. You won even if the world thought that you had nothing. May Allah bless you and us all with Jannah and unite us in the companionship of those whom he loves. Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and the Anbiya. May Allah bless us all. For as long as your focus is Jannah, you will make a certain type of a dua and a supplication. What will it be? It will include the hereafter in it. Oh Allah, you blessed me in this world. Oh Allah, you blessed me in this world. Grant me humility and grant me the bigger blessing where you can bless me in the hereafter too. The people around Qarun, they looked at him and they were divided into a few categories. They saw him with amazing belongings and they said, we wish we had like Qarun. So some of the scholars at the time and the knowledgeable, they said, if Allah gave him and it caused him to be unplugged from Allah's connection, then don't ask Allah for that type of wealth. Don't ask Allah. وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمَ وَيْلَكُمْ ثَوَابُ اللَّهِ خَيْرٌ لِمَنْ آمَنْ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَلَا يُلَقَّاهَا إِلَّا الصَّابِرُونَ The people of knowledge at the time of Qarun told those who were wishing to have what Qarun had that you know what? The reward that Allah will give you is better than what this guy has. Because whatever he has, 
drifted him away from Allah. If you're going to get it, you're going to be drifted away from Allah. So Allah says, فَخَسَفْنَا بِهِ وَبِدَارِهِ الْأَرْضَ He became so arrogant, we opened the earth, caused an earthquake, and we swallowed him in there and closed it back. When they got up in the morning, where is this man? Where is his palace? Where is his wealth? Where is everything he had? No where to be found. Gone, swallowed. Now the people are looking saying, Hey, just as well Allah didn't give us. If he gave us, we would have been swallowed with this man. They realize that the true value is that which is with Allah in terms of your connection with Allah. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, tells us, The two units of Sunnah of Fajr are better than the whole world and whatever it has in terms of material items. Two units of Fajr. Why? Because those are a sign of your connection with Allah. Can you put a price tag at that? I give you one example. I told you earlier, your heart pumps 136,000 times. If you are a multi-millionaire and you have a hundred million dollars and your heart starts pumping irregularly, what would you pay to save your life? Would you not give all of those hundred million? And say, never mind if I'm being saved and my heart is going to pump properly. I don't mind paying a million, 10 million, 100 million, whatever, for as long as I have that life. Or at least a large amount of money you're ready to pay. For what? For one heartbeat. Because if it misses, you're gone. For one heartbeat. You can't see properly, you pay. You can't hear properly, you pay. You're ready to pay. Allah tells you, we gave you all of that, all of that for free, man, for free. And we told you for years on end, all we want from you, just be a better person. Come connect to us. When we tell you to pray, we want you to get up early. We want you to do certain things. You may know, you may not know the benefit of it, but the benefit of it will stretch way beyond your imagination. You get into the hereafter, you have so much, you will have the blessings more than you imagined. So Karun was destroyed. The people began to say just as well, we didn't have what he had. The people said, well, if Allah had given us he would have also caused us to be swallowed by the earth. Just as well he didn't. My brothers, my sisters. Rabbana atina fid dunya hasana. I'm living, I'm alive on earth. I'm a human. I like nice things. I make dua. Oh Allah, grant me goodness in this world. Wa fil akhirati hasana. But I also say, oh Allah, grant me goodness in the hereafter. For your information, which one is more important? The one for the hereafter. That's why we say, waqina adab an nar. Save us from the punishment of hellfire. So three things are mentioned in this blessed dua. Blessed supplication. Two thirds are connected to the hereafter and one third is connected to this world. The first part of it connected to this world because I'm on earth now. Oh Allah, give me goodness on earth. It's not wrong to have goodness. You can have. May Allah bless all of us with beautiful sustenance on earth that will help us to get closer to him. Say Amin. But my brothers, my sisters, listen to this carefully. If you study that dua, it gives you proportion. It teaches you that look, the greater prayer, more things are being asked for the hereafter rather than this world. So Allah says, if you have been given both, mashallah, you are fortunate. But not everyone is going to be given both. Some might have struggles on earth. So people say, how come I'm a believer, but I'm struggling. And then there are people who don't believe and they are leading a life full of ease and comfort. They are enjoying. The answer to that is quite simple. The minute you declare that I believe, Allah says, do you really believe? That's a question. <laughs> 
Do people think that just by them saying we believe that that's sufficient? Do they think that by them saying we believe they are not going to be tested? Allah says, those are the ones we will test. We tested them before you. Allah says, we tested those before in order to distinguish who is truthful and who is not truthful. When you don't believe, Allah might give you anything. Allah says, لا يغرنك تقلب الذين كفروا في البلاد. Those who don't believe, don't let yourself become deceived by their enjoyment on earth. Because the hereafter, they would lose. But for you and I, Allah says, you claim to believe now, we will start testing you. So you will have more tests. Yesterday in Lusaka, I gave an example of a school and I said, you know what? We have examinations. Who is tested? Only those who are in the classroom, in the school. If you're not in the school and you're outside, are you tested? You're not tested because why? You're not interested in the certificate. You want the certificate. You want to graduate. You want the good things. Well, you better enroll. And when you enroll, you better study. You're going to know and we're going to teach you what's right and wrong. And when you know what's right and wrong, we're going to test you. We're going to give you one after the other after another of the tests and exams. And each one becomes more difficult than the previous one. But Allah says, you know what? Because you're in here, you will graduate. And when you graduate, you now have access to paradise. That's why you are tested more. A lot of believers, sometimes they become despondent. I'm going through struggles. You know what? Allah wants you to get closer to him. That's why he made you go through tests. When we go through challenges and tests, Allah wants us to pray to him, to cry to him, to come to pray, to change our lives. That's why it happens. How many people change their lives after a problem came in their lives that they thought would never be solved and Allah solved it. On the other hand, when you have a problem and you want to get to bad habits to solve your problem, it becomes even worse. There are people when they have a bad thing that has happened to them and they are going through a trying time, they go on to drugs, they go on to drinking, they become intoxicated and they think, you know what? I will forget my problem. You will forget your problem for five minutes. And after that, you have a bigger problem for five years. Is that a solution? It's not. But Allah says, we put a problem in your life in order for you to get closer to us because we saw that you were going far away and we love you so much. We wanted to tap you to say, hey, 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 you better come back, come back. But you're not coming. So Allah says, well, we are going to put for you a challenge in your life, your health, your family, your business, perhaps something will go wrong until you come crying to us and say, oh, Allah, forgive me. I have done wrong. Help me through my problem. Allah says, continue to call out to Allah until the day we grant you that reprieve or that ease. So Allah doesn't solve it immediately most of the time. Why? Because he loves you. He wants to keep you there. I know people who get up for Salat Tahajjud and they said it started off with a problem where we had a major issue in our lives and we couldn't solve it. So we got up for Tahajjud and when we got up, we cried to Allah to solve our problem and Allah did not solve it instantly, but we continued to cry. The day the problem got solved, we already got used to getting up for this prayer. By that time I'm awake. I'd rather come and pray for Allah. Was that not a sign of the love of Allah? So Allah says, call out to me, call out to me for everything and anything. Don't underestimate it. You have to, you must make dua always. It's a very powerful tool, no matter what. You know what Allah says? I told you guidance. Allah says, all of you are astray, except those whom we chose to guide. So ask us for the guidance. We will guide you. The same Hadith Qudsi says, Ya Ibadi, O oh my worshippers, O oh my slaves, Allah is addressing us. Kullukum arin illa man kasawtuhu, fastaksuni aksukum. All of you are unclothed except those whom we have clothed. So ask me to clothe you, to grant you clothing, a covering, to grant you goodness. Allah has covered all the bad and what we show people is all good. You know that covering is from Allah. Imagine I'm standing in front of you. You cannot see my sins. You are sitting in front of me. I cannot see your sins. Why? 
It's the favor of Allah upon you and I. If we had our sins written on our foreheads, no one would want to look at us. But Allah says, no man, you are my slave, my worshiper. My relationship with you is a personal one. You call out to me. You ask me, I will cover you. I will clothe you. You appear beautiful. You appear good. So develop a connection with me. That's what Allah is saying.